Good morning. Good morning. How's everyone today? Great, good. Just two simple announcements. Uh, tomorrow's not a, a holy day because it falls on a Monday. So that, that was a decision made by bishops in the early 90s. Um, and I should put something in the bulletin so you understand it. But there will be a Mass here tomorrow at 9 a.m. if you'd like to join us, because it's not required by the bishop, so you can come to Mass anyways, 9 a.m. and 7 p.m. That's the first announcement. The second one is, I talked to Father Dennis this last week. He's doing well. He's coming along. He's just dealing with some medical things. And he sends his prayers and love to you all. And he thanks you for your prayers. And if I have anything further to report next week, then you'll hear from me. I put a little something in the bulletin. Thank you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. With today's message is about shaking off the mud from us. In today's first reading from Jeremiah, he was doing the right thing. He was preaching God's message, and he got thrown in a cistern and was sitting, here, sitting there in the mud as we hear the first reading proclaimed. And there are many times in my, our lives we... We, we're, doing the, we're doing the right thing, and we feel like we get beaten up. And I know we've all had that experience. And so in times like that, instead of pushing back, yelling, screaming, and hollering, uh, we need to rely on the Lord to give us the grace to focus on him so we can get through those disconnections in our lives. So as we come together as a family of believers, let us seek forgiveness in the Lord when we have trusted that he will guide us, lead us, and show us the way. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, bring us to an everlasting life. Amen. Let us praise the Lord in song. Thank you. 
Let us pray. O oh God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that, loving you in all things and above all things, we may obtain your promises which surpasses every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. In those days, the princesses said to the king, Jeremiah ought to be put to death. He is demoralizing the soldiers who are left in the city and all the people by speaking such things to them. He is not interested in the welfare of our people, but in their ruin. King Zedekiah answered, He is in your power, for the king could do nothing with them. And so they took Jeremiah and threw him into the cistern of Prince Malchiah, which was in the quarters of the guard, letting him down with ropes. There was no water in the cistern, only mud, and Jeremiah sank into the mud. Ebed Miluk, a court official, went there from the palace and said to him, My lord king, these men have been at fault in all they have done to the prophet Jeremiah, casting him into the cistern. He will die of famine on the spot, for there is no more food in the city. Then the king ordered Ebed Miluk, the Cushite, to take three men along with him and draw the prophet Jeremiah out of the cistern before he should die. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us rid ourselves of every burden and sin that clings to us and persevere in running the race that lies before us while keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, the leader and perfecter of faith. For the sake of the joy that lay before him, he endured the cross, despising its shame, and has taken his seat at the right of the throne of God. Consider how he endured such opposition from sinners, in order that you may not grow weary and lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, I have come to set the earth on fire, and how I wish it were already ablazing. There is a baptism with which I must baptize, and how great is my anguish until it is accomplished. Do you think I have come to establish peace on the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, a household of five will be divided, three against two and two against three. A father will be divided against his son and a son against his father. A mother against her daughter, and a daughter against her mother. A mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. The Gospel of the Lord. Shake off the mud. It's kind of hard to do. How do you shake mud off? Well, that was the line that came to me after reading the readings this week. So um, I think it was Tuesday. I was made some pork chops on the grill, and I was all excited, and I'm ready to sit down and eat my pork chops. And the evening secretary comes in and says, Father, you have to, come, you have to go over to church. People are complaining because the kids are on the skateboards. And so I I says, okay. And Father Dennis normally does that, right? And so I came over, and and the lights were left on, so that got my attention as I came through the doors there. I said, oh, I'm going to shut off the lights. Just these were on, so I went and shut off the lights in the back, and, and then I could hear that the skateboard noise 
was coming from this door. So I walk over here, and I slowly open the door, and I hear a voice, gotta go. <laughs> and so I, I open the door, and I look, and I said, yeah, guys, you gotta go. And the other kid says, yep, we gotta go. <laughs> they knew right away they shouldn't be skateboarding on there. And so, and, the, and, and I said, somebody had their bike, like, locked up near the Mary statue there. And I said, well, whose bike is that, thinking it was theirs? And they said, nope, we don't know who this is, who's, whose bike it is, but we got to go. <laughs> and I said, yeah, you really got the message, huh? And they said, well, at least you were nice about it. <laughs> so we got to go. That's an important, I think that's an important phrase. We got to go. God wants us to got to go and be open to his word and share his word and use his word to build his kingdom. We got work to do. You know, no matter how young or how we're old we are, sometimes we say we're really young. Well, eh, it's not, it doesn't mean it doesn't pertain to us. So we're really old and we say we did our bit already. It doesn't pertain to us. But we got to go. But what does God's word say today that we got to go do? Here's what we got to go do. It's not always easy. Got to shake off the mud. Here in the first reading from Jeremiah, I'd like to set up the scene. There was this encounter between Jeremiah. Now remember, Jeremiah was a prophet. He delivered God's word. And people sometimes didn't want to hear God's word because it meant change, transformation, conversion. So there was this dialogue between Jeremiah and Zedekiah, who was king of Judah. Zedekiah was a weak leader, spineless. He was a puppet under the control of the Babylons that were conquering Judah. So King Zedekiah thought he could win the war. Wow, we can beat him. So Zedekiah asked Jeremiah, what's the outcome going to be? You know, could we win the war? And Zed, when Zedekiah asked Jeremiah this question, Jeremiah didn't give him the assurance he was open for. His response to the king was, this revolt against the Babylonians was going to be suicidal. We weren't going to win. And what Jeremiah said to the king was, submission was the only way to survive this. Jeremiah called the people to two things, prayer and repentance. In the middle of the siege, he was asked to call for Yahweh's help. Instead, Jeremiah insisted that the head of the Babylonians, his name is Nebuchadnezzar, if you can spell that, I'll give you a dollar, <laughs> would win. And because he said that, Jeremiah was arrested for treason, an act of leaving his post. And, you know, he was put in this cistern. And the best way to describe the cistern, it's, it's a, from what I've seen, it's a big round thing. It's almost like a well. And he was thrown in there, and he's sitting in the mud. He did the right thing. So he's probably sitting there thinking, Lord, where are you in all this? How many times do we feel in our lives like we're doing the right thing, and we get beaten up? And we feel misunderstood, and we feel disconnected, and we feel disrespected, all of those in our different relationships. I'm sure that's what Jeremiah was feeling when he's sitting in this cistern loaded with mud. And most of these cisterns were built where there was no way to get out. No way. But what happened? There was a, um, a foreigner, an Ethiopian. We hear about this in the reading. He was part of the court of King Zedekiah. This Ethiopian servant, pleaded to the king for Jeremiah's life and then rescued him out of this pit of mud. And what I'd like to point out for our consideration, 
wasn't it interesting that God didn't use an Israelite? He didn't use an Israelite. He used the foreigner as a means to continue his plan of salvation through the prophet Jeremiah. I think there's, there's something here. And then some of the scripture scholars have referred to a prayer of Jeremiah in chapter 15 of Jeremiah. And it's interesting. So Jeremiah is having this big conversation with God and, you know, trying to understand all of this disconnection. He's going through all of this division. And here's God's response to D Jeremiah. When Jeremiah is talking to him about all this division, he's supposed to be, you know, the messenger for God's word, and he's supposed to be protected. Here's God's response. The Lord answered me, and I will make you towards this people a solid wall of brass. Isn't that interesting? I will make you a solid wall of brass, though they fight against you, they shall not prevail. For I'm with you to deliver you and rescue, says the Lord. And he did. He rescued him out of the cistern to continue to be God's messenger. I will free you from the hands of the wicked and rescue you from the grasp of violence. I really believe there's a message here for all of us that pertains to the here and now. We hear Luke's gospel today, and we're like, well, we thought Jesus came to save us, yeah? We thought Jesus is going to be the king of priest. Peace, rather. Peace. The king of peace, right? We thought Jesus was coming to unite humanity. This gospel reading from Luke doesn't make any sense. But if we pay attention... What does the beginning of the gospel reading say? I'll read it to you. The beginning of what we hear today says, Jesus said to his disciples, thank you. So Jesus says to his disciples about all of this division. The point of the gospel is this, when you're a disciple of Christ and when you're following Christ the best you can, who's going to come and challenge that? Do, 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 do. You know who I'm talking about? Who? Thank you. The evil one, Satan, right? He's going to come get you. And I don't want to be too radical, but, but it's true. You're doing the right thing and you're saying, Lord, give me a break. Let me give you an example. This is, this is a funny one. So I, I had mass. At the, you know, my first parish picnic, I had mass. And so, you know, we're there at, at the park you know, two blocks down, everything's great, music's great, everything's great. And I open my Bible to preach. All of a sudden, this helicopter comes from the west. Do, 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 And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. And so I have to talk, like, really loud. And it's going, do, 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 do. And I thought, okay, it's going east. It'll, it'll pass soon. But no. <laughs> it kept circling around. It was making me crazy. I wanted to say with rubber band or something, you know? And it went choo, 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 And it was like it was looking for somebody. Then another one came. And it was that same thing. You know how the helicopter makes the sound? Choo, 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 choo. And it was like, all right already. And it's kind of like sometimes in life there are distractions, there are disconnections. I call it the mud. And the answer for getting the mud off is found in today's second reading from, uh, from the Hebrews. And it's all about focusing on Christ. And it says it right here. It's chapter 12 of Hebrews. And um, it's verse 2. While keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, the leader and perfecter of faith. So keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, what's going to happen and what has happened in our lives, if we're honest, when we're going through the real muddy times, God will send 
the least expected person into our lives to help us. Do you believe that's true? I do. I do. It's happened to me. You know, you're having a really tough day or a tough month or a tough year, and then God sends the people to you you least expect to help you. I really think that's what the gospel reading and the first reading from Jeremiah and the reading from Hebrews is all about. Being open to God's plan, because sometimes the mud will come off right away, and sometimes it'll stick a long time. But here's the point, brothers and sisters, it doesn't matter. Because when we keep our eyes fixed on the Lord, he will provide for us, and we could get through anything in life. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, God from God, begotten not made, but substantially of the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. And that the Holy Spirit was incarnate with Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified on the flesh as Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated in the right hand of the Father. He will come again in order to judge the living and the dead. And his name will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and the glory to the resurrection of the dead, and the of the world to come. Amen. And let us offer our prayers for the world, our nation, and community of faith. for Pope Francis and all bishops, that they may be blessed with the courage to preach the gospel always. We pray. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. That nations may see divisions and disagreements as opportunities for honest and constructive dialogue for the benefit of all. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are imprisoned, especially those serving life sentences, that they may not grow weary and lose heart, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all military, police, firefighters, and first responders, may they be kept safe from all harm as they serve and protect us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That families who are divided may find comfort and peace in the embrace of an all merciful God as they cope with strained relationships and estranged family members. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our communities, for nonviolence, for the protection of all human life, for the grace to uphold the dignity of every human being. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all whom remembered today at Mass, especially Raymond Elloway, Sister Regina Marie Dubicus, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick, especially the Fitzgerald family, and all those listed in our parish bulletin and book of prayer intentions, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our dearly departed loved ones, especially Lottie Paradise, that they may rest in the peace of Christ. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious, loving God, we offer up all of our prayers through Christ our Lord.
Father Almighty. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your word you created the world, and you govern all things in harmony. You gave us the same word made flesh as mediator, as he has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. He is the way that leads us to you, the truth that sets us free, the life that fills us with gladness. And therefore, and now for all ages unending, we proclaim your glory as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walks with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night before he was to die and to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, all the clergy and all the deacons and your entire people. Grant that the faithful of the church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all that, sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope. We may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. 
Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, her spouse, St. Joseph, with the blessed apostles, martyr, St. Catherine of Alexandria, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days so that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us share a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
at the top. Let us pray. May partakers of Christ, through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, O Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be co heirs in heaven, through Christ our Lord. So today's message is about shaking off the mud, but sometimes we can't shake it all off, and that's okay. As long as we're following the Lord and open to his plan for us, we will see many fruits in our lives. The peace of the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you till we gather again in prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thank you, God.